Hello everyone, it's Marius here with Cloud Data Labs. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can make your Azure Synapse pipelines more flexible and reusable by adding parameters in just few easy steps. Stay tuned. Azure Synapse provides an easy to use visual interface for building pipelines that transform and move data from various sources to various destinations. However, as your pipeline become more complex, you might find that you need to make it more flexible and dynamic. This is where parameterization comes in. Parameterization is the process of defining parameters for pipelines, data sets and link services that can be dynamically updated when the pipeline is executed. To demonstrate it, in this video, we're going to use pipeline that I have created in my previous video. So be sure to check it out. The link is in the description below. Now let's head over to Azure Synapse workspace to see how it's done. We are now in Azure Synapse workspace. And a good place to start is by explaining what we are going to do. As mentioned earlier, we will parameterize the pipeline that we have created in our previous video. So let's navigate to integrate in the menu and find the pipeline that we have built previously. Now select copy data activity and navigate to source properties to investigate our source data set. As you can see, the file path in this data set is fixed, so we can only copy the specific file, dbo employees csv. What we want to do is to parameterize the file path, and that includes file system directory, as well as file name, so we can pass these values dynamically and use this pipeline to copy multiple files. Now let's enable interactive authoring so we can browse the data lake. Now that interactive authoring is enabled, let's explore the files we are going to copy using our improved pipeline. As you can see, we have two files in our source folder, dbo employees.csv, the one that is currently used in the dataset, and the second one is dbo orders.csv. Now that we have good idea on what we're going to do, let's start parameterizing our dataset. To do this, navigate to Parameters Properties. Here, we need to add three parameters. File system, folder path, and file name. Now let's head back to the connection properties to add these parameters in the right places. As you might have noticed, when you click inside most of the text boxes, underneath it, blue add dynamic content link will appear. Let's click on it. Any property where add dynamic content is available can be parameterized as well as ADF expression language can be used to combine expressions, functions and system variables. If you're interested in ADF expression language, I will definitely use it a lot more in my future videos. But for now, I will leave the link to the documentation in the description below, so you can explore it in your own time. Now, let's select our parameter from the list below. And as you can see, the expression has been added. So let's click OK and do the same for the remaining fields. As you might have noticed, our file name contains the extension, but I don't want this to be passed as part of the parameter value. Instead, I'm going to concatenate it here in the expression. And later, you will see why. To do this, Let's add curly braces around our parameter 
and add.csv behind it. Here, you could use concat function, but I prefer to use this method. Looks like our data set is all set. So let's click commit and go back to the copy data activity. As you can see, our dataset parameters are already available in our pipeline. But before we do anything with them, let's do the same with the sync dataset. Here, click on open and navigate into parameters. And again, we need to add our three parameters. File system, folder path, and file name. Now let's go back to connection properties and add these parameters as dynamic content for the file path fields. Here, our file name property will have different extension as we persisting different file formats. So, instead of .csv, we are going to concatenate .parquet. And now, as we're all done with our sync dataset, we can press commit and go back to the copy data activity in our pipeline. Now, both of our datasets are parameterized. What we need to do next is create parameters on the pipeline level, so we can pass them into our dataset parameters. To do this, let's click somewhere into Pipeline Canvas, and as you can see, we have our pipeline properties available, where the first one is parameters. Now we need to add pipeline parameters. For the source, we're going to add input parameters. And for the sync, we're going to create output parameters. So we're going to have input file system, input folder path, output file system, output folder path. The exception here is file name, where we can share this one between both datasets. Of course, if you wish to change the name of the file while moving it, you can create two parameters instead, one for source and one for sync. However, I will keep the names the same. Now let's provide some default values for our parameters. As we move in data within the same container, we will use metadata for both input and output file system. For input folder path, we will use source. And for the output folder path, we will use sync. For the file name default, let's use DBO employees. And remember, the file extensions are concatenated in the dataset file name, so we don't need to provide it here. Now that our parameters are in place, let's go back to the copy data activity. Here we can create reference between pipeline parameters and the dataset parameters. Let's start with source properties. File system will be input file system. Folder path will be input folder path. And the file name will be just file name. Once we're done, we can move on to the sync properties. Here, we repeat the process. However, instead of input, we will assign output parameters.
and now it looks like our pipeline is ready for testing. However, before we debug it, let's go and check the sync folder to make sure it's empty. And as you can see, there's nothing in the folder. So let's go back to the pipeline and hit debug. For this run, we can leave the parameters as default. Click OK and wait for the run to end. And as the first run has completed successfully, we can hit the back again. This time, however, we will change the file name parameter value to DBO orders. So it will copy the second file from the source folder. Again, let's hit OK to confirm it. Looks like the second run has been successful as well. So we can go to check the sync folder to see if both files are there. And as expected, both DBO employees and DBO orders parquet files are present. As you have seen, parameterization is a powerful tool that can make your pipelines more flexible and dynamic. I hope you found this video informative and that it will help you to make the most out of your Azure Synapse pipelines. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more tutorials like this. Thanks for watching and I see you in the next one.